after, let's say, intimate relationships, and the only newness that is brought into the mix is, is with someone else, basically. I mean, so you think, oh, it's not like the last one. This is with Sue. But it's exactly <laughs> like the last one. It just had a different name, Wendy. You know what I mean? And then if you look at, oh, I've never really been satisfied in all my relationships. What was the one constant? You. You were the one constant with the Mary Sue. But what? That just went over my head. It doesn't go over our head just randomly. It's a fixed denial. It's a fixed stubbornness to just, no matter what the evidence is, we're going to stubbornly hold on to the story that I'm terminally unique. Therefore, you can't understand me. There's, you cannot understand how it is for me. Of course they can. If they have what you seem to have or what's had you had them, you'll identify with them. That's what happens in a recovery meeting. I don't identify with who's there. I identify with what's taken them over because they take, they've been taken over by the same mental parasite that this was taken over by. We've lived under the tyranny of, it, tyranny of it. Some of us have gotten relief. So we share about what it was like, what happened, and what it's like now. So that, And everyone goes, oh, yeah, because that's what it's like. The occupying force has been sort of stymied by a power greater than it. And then the seeming host can wiggle out of this little mental suit it's been in and find out it was never that to begin with. There was no helmet on. <laughs> now what am I going to do with all this time? Yeah, that's it, man. <laughs> it's incredible. It really is to me. It's freaking incredible. Because there's a pantomime that people want relief, but they really want it their own way. They're not really open to too much new information. Yeah, I mean, they stubbornly adopted AA, let's say, and now everything else is not AA. <laughs> no, 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 I meant it, not AA. I'm not going to do that. You know? <laughs> it's like insane. <laughs> this is a... I had ideas of what I thought would happen if this event ever happened, and it had nothing to do with any of the thoughts I ever had about it. No, it's not about people recognizing you're spiritual. You don't have a loving gaze at all times. It's not like you're blissed out all the time and you have no feelings. It's just that you're awake to being awake. Yeah? You are awake, and you become awake to that. Yeah? It doesn't make everything like ice cream parlors and everyone lets you go ahead in the line. Oh, you're so I can feel something different. It may not happen that way. It may be as ordinary as ordinary can be. And a lot of people get bored because of that. Because what happens with us, I've noticed, is we're so engaged in this one realm of experience, we want what is contextual or what is not of this place, to be an experience in this place. Like Jesus supposedly said that, you know, we're in this world, and what is this world but a world of experiences? Yeah, We're in this world, but we're not of this world. So if we're really looking for what we are, we're not going to find it in an experience. We're going to find it beyond or behind experiences, yeah? Let's use the term state, which doesn't capture it, because there's mental states all day that are in depicting and interpreting and reacting to this experience. Yeah? But let's say it's a state beyond states, and that state beyond state is, cannot be experienced. You're never going to feel it, taste it, touch it, smell it, think it. It's not going to happen, and it never will happen. But because we are that, yeah, through testing, tasting, experiencing this and that, by the movement of this experience, we can we'll intimate what's behind it all. Yeah, you'll have a sense of what's behind it all, and after a while, you may give it the name God or the divine spirit or something. But after a while, you'll come to the conclusion you are that. Yeah, you are that which is looking out of everyone's head. You are that. But you won't get, you will not get, to, well, my experience of it was, you will not get to you are that 
Yeah? From I'm this, and I'm going to experience what I am. Yeah? What I'm not is never going to be have an experience of what it is. It's never going to find out what it is through what you're not. What we do in this message is question what you're taking yourself to be and see if it's so. If it ain't so, if you are not that, you'll stop looking for what you are and then you'll find out what you are by its intimation through this experience. Yeah? In other words, it will be like you're walking by a pond or a lake and you'll get glimpses of a reflection in the activities and you'll get a sense, I'm that. Yeah? I'm that. And so as soon as that sense of I am that becomes stabilized in, in the awareness of it, what happens is its translation here is that the action figure finally finds its true goal, which is to travel lighter at all times, but not through the action figure. So by not being the action figure is the greatest policy for contentment and joy the action figure can ever find. Now, the stubbornness to stay identified as the action figure is precluding this possibility to arrive because we want what we are to be an experience that I have. I want to find my authentic self. There's no authentic self or false self to find. St. Francis says this beautifully. What's looking is what you're looking for. What's looking is what you're looking for. So what happens when the you is identified with, the looking is like looking like this. And you're never going to be go fast enough where you're, you're an object to your subjectivity. You know what I mean? You're not going to be able to move fast enough where you'll finally see yourself. <laughs> <Yeah>? <laughs> I don't care. It's like a gunslinger. You're never going to outdraw what's always so. It's The gun's out already. So you're never going to be able to... I'm going to see it. <laughs> it's, gonna, it's never going to happen. Now, you can talk these great things on progressing towards that moment. It's all baloney. It's just, a, it's just a rationalization of an impossibility that you're attempting to make possible as a mental state, basically. Yeah? So now we have progress and lifetimes of effort and, you know, this and that. And maybe we'll throw a little token to grace. But no, it's still usually based on us. Because if I don't want to receive the grace, then we'll, no. It's all selfing, selfing, selfing. Trying to write itself into the story. So, you have a great moment or two where the, the, the selfing has been diminished. The mental state parrots the idea that it's the one who had that experience, which is not an experience. And if your attention and mind is leaning towards that identification, the epiphany will stop as soon as you think you had it. Yeah? As soon as you think you have peace, it seems to evade your occupation or the acquiring of it. It doesn't seem to stay as soon as you build a fence around it. Yeah? And it's, ne it's not like it's unruly and you haven't tamed it yet. It's just when you're here, what you're looking for doesn't seem to be here. Yeah? When you're looking for a peace and you're the one that's looking for a peace, what's missing? Peace. Or you wouldn't, you wouldn't be freaking looking, yes? As soon as we think we found, we seem to lose, and it generates more seeking because we're using the same failed format over and over again, and we're not getting it because the identification as self is a stubborn little groove in the record. You get stuck there, it sings like the rest of the record, but it ain't the rest, it's the, the one groove. You're just doing the same old, same old. You know, like when I got sober, the day I got sober from alcohol and drugs was a regular day at the office. All I was trying to do was stay as low as I could until I could get high. And I was always running into what I'd been running into the last 
10 months, which was lack of money. <laughs> so I had to sort of barter and give whatever I thought they, someone else thought was valuable at this point, which wasn't much. So I wasn't getting it on anymore because my charm was gone and I, it wasn't like a valuable piece of preoccupation <laughs> for most people. So I was stymied quite a lot and I was fucking pissed. <laughs> so I ended up in a trailer park after a four day whatever, you know, four day was just a, it was just like a continual thing for ten months after I left this place called Lancy Street. And I ended up in a trailer park, and I'm just drinking a bottle of Royal Gay Faka with this guy who I didn't, didn't know. He just sort of woke up in uh, Calistoga. <laughs> I left on St. Patrick's Day in San Francisco, lost my friend's car, came to in Calistoga three days later, and who is this guy? And he looked like a bum to me. And yet, suddenly... I saw my. I thought he was looking at me like I was a bum, and there was something happened that had never. I've never noticed it before. I think it was a common occurrence when I was a kid, but I hadn't hadn't no idea. See what you can't. If you're looking for nothing, which we are, and if you're looking for nothing from a mental state, the only way you can translate it is into something. That's why we miss it all the time. So when some this nothing happened, it was not like anything I, I could ever thought of, or even try to angle towards or aim as a goal in life. It was to, I was missing the point because it was right where I was at all times, <laughs> you know. So this thing downloaded, and information downloaded, and it was very very practical. Go to a phone booth and call for help. <laughs> That's what it was. You know what I mean? <laughs> that was it. Now, a minute before, I wasn't thinking of doing that. It was the farthest thing from my mind because I had given up hope. I just spent two years in Delancey Street, graduated, and I went on a 10-month run. <laughs> so I had given up all hope. But that's what happened. And I've never picked up a drink since. Something put the stop to the show. That was it. It wasn't me. And I'll tell you, there was a lot of people wanting to put the stop to that show. My mother, you know, the state, you know, enemies, friends. I wanted to. Nothing fucking could produce a shift in mind that would allow me to entertain a new idea. I was just going just the same old, same old, shooting drugs and just doing this. Yet something put a stop to it. And the next day, I ended up in an AA meeting. I swear to God, under the guise that the lady said, if you want a place to stay tonight, who came up and picked me up, you got to go to an AA meeting. It wasn't like I had any virtue. And so, oh, I think I, I hear people share now. It blows my mind at recovery meetings. Oh, I've been, I was thinking about not drinking. None of that ever happened. It's like the fucking floor fell out and I fell in a hole. And the next thing, the first rope was, hey, you can stay at my house if you go to a meeting. Okay. <laughs> that was basically it. <laughs> you know, and then, but when I got there, something had been waiting for me. And this, the thing that set this ball in motion had to, wasn't like a one step pony, you know, like for me, when I was listening to my head and I'd be, the cops would be after me, and I'd pull up and I'd be caught in an alley, it would tell me to run <laughs> down the alley like a dead end. No, this thing that was directing my life now saw steps ahead. So it set up these circumstances to get me to my first meeting, and bam something was given to me, and I hadn't had a thought or a feeling to get high ever since. I mean, that thing that you would, you would expect would have a life just stopped all at once and never, never gained traction again in this event. What more do I need as a demonstration? It stopped the most important, influential foreign installment in my life that stopped it, which no one who loved me could. The state couldn't. The Lancer Street couldn't. No freaking thing could do it. This thing did it in five minutes. Not even. It, was, it had, took absolutely no time. None. And that force that moved this in a new direction hasn't gone out at all. Has never lost steam. It sort of generates itself. I mean, there was no debate after that. All it needed after that was a lot of refuse being cleaned out. 
And that's what I think the steps do. I think the steps just diminish a mental state. They don't produce a spiritual state. You are a spiritual state. They diminish a mental state that is seemingly eclipsing the, the spiritual state. And why it seems to eclipse it is your interest and attention is on that mental side. Because the mental side is all about me. And I love that freaking me. I want to have more of that me. Yeah, Even while it's killing you, you still want to be me. Yeah? When I lost interest in all that which was facilitating the production of me, then, what? oh, unbelievable, miracle upon miracles, the mental state was seen as a sort of paper tiger, and then what had never said a thing, never did anything except everything, just became the dominant influence. And I've had relief, not just from alcoholism, that's just a start. I had relief, like it says, you will stop fighting everyone in anything. It doesn't specialize in one little topic. It opens up because you're it. You are what you've been looking for. But not as you're looking. Not how you're looking. It's how we're looking. It's blinding us to the seeing that we naturally are. Yeah. We become... We've fallen under the sway of a formatted interpretation, a mental state that keeps chirping this message. You see it working in the world here. People can make you believe almost anything if they can repeat it long enough to you. And the mental state's repeating a lot of stuff all day. Yeah? And we've, we've subscribed to K-Paul. I mean, I oh, Jesus Christ, all oh, this is golden oldies and fucking, you know, <laughs> and things, you know, those were the days, my <laughs> friends. This was a sucky song. And, oh, oh, you know, it's just on and on and on. It just goes on and on and on. And then we keep buying the same product because it promises something for us. Yeah? The whole thing, really, is how... See, in recovery they talk about self can't get out of self. It's one of the most profound statements because that's most of us is what we're doing. The mental state taken as self is trying to get out of the mental state. Yeah, But how can something that's produced by the mental state ever leave the mental state? And as AA says, the problem centers in the mind. It's not the elbow. It's not my feelings. My feelings have been co-opted by the mental state. It tells me what I'm feeling. The feeling I recognize as a stimulation or experience, but then it tells me what it means. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I believe it like the fucking Greek oracle. So where would your problems be unless you beckon them with thought? Yeah. How could yesterday and tomorrow have so much sway over us unless we thought about them? Because we can't feel them, we can't see them, we can't taste yesterday and tomorrow, but we sure think a lot about it. What would happen? Can you stop it from thinking that way? Why waste your time? Just realize you're not the thinker and you'll lose interest in the thought system because it's worthy of being lost, losing interest in. Because it's fucking small. And it's a failed system, like once again it says in recovery. Why are you in so much fear today? Isn't it because self-reliance has failed you? What's self-reliance? I can't see self-reliance going to any more extreme point than identification as that which you're relying on, self. So there is a solution. the solution, from the solution's point of view, there is no problem. That doesn't mean it can't produce effects, because the mind believing it will produce effects through it. But inherently, there is no problem. In other words, what you're trying to get out of, you are actually never in. Yeah? What you are trying to get out of, you are actually never in. Why it seems to fail all the time, because we missed a very clear clear understanding that we are not in it. There's an implication or an assumption I'm in something, 
and therefore it seems noble or seems like appropriate to want to get out. But why doesn't it work? Have you? How many times have you gotten out or just to be in something else again? You can basically look at, you're always trying to get out of what you think you're in. You, know, you, you think you're in Monday and you're trying to get out of that. By doing what? Thinking about Friday. When you hit Friday, you'll be thinking about Monday. To get out of Friday. Basically, you just don't want to fucking accept what's happening. You want to have an interpretation that it's all about you, and it ain't. So the sense of the selfing produces a me. To me, selfing is a mental process. What this mental process does, it has an assumption that there's a someone behind everything, and you're it, yeah? And that someone is either in a body, or has a body, or is the body, but it's located in this vicinity, yeah? And now, when feelings occur, the mental process has now captured the feelings by claiming them to be yours, and it's using feelings to facilitate what we call the bondage of self. So how does it facilitate that? The feelings are held as my feelings. The bondage is at the my, not the feelings. The my is the thrust of the mental process, and it uses whatever feelings arise to facilitate the bondage. Yeah? So, it, so it, the my is there. That's the intent. Yeah? Everything's about me. And then a feeling comes by, and it holds the feeling as my feeling, and it, then that facilitates that feeling to be pointing at you. You're the one who has the feeling. Same thing with thoughts. Thoughts arise, go on. But the my is sort of hold, is like a fix to it. It's not true, but there's a thought that sneaks in, and it says my thought, and now all the thoughts are used to facilitate the bondage of self. Yeah? By either taking yourself to be the object of the thoughts or the thinker of the thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everything, all of it. The body the same way, my body. Problems, my problems. You know? Bottle, this is just a bottle. I'll show you very, you can see it so clearly. Bottle, it's just a bottle. Now, my bottle. It's being used to reference the one who has the bottle, yes? That's what's happening all day. If you're not aware of it, you're going to be aware from it, and that's not much awareness. The heist is happening all day. Thoughts, all mine. Bottle, mine. Problems, mine. Time, mine. Shoes, mine. Pants, mine. Girlfriend, mine. This one, da 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 Mine, 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 mine. Simple example, girlfriend. You're having a great time with a woman. Very good time. Suddenly, it gets to a point where, all right, we've got to move this relationship on. All right, so now you're my girlfriend. Suddenly, the my brings out a lot of behavior in you. That wasn't being brought out when you were just a boyfriend, you know, hanging out. My girlfriend now means I have jurisdiction over what she does. And I have the right to look at her emails just to see what my girlfriend is doing when my girlfriend isn't with her boyfriend, which is me. Yeah. And it goes on and on. Before, none of it's getting triggered. But the my triggers it. You see it. If you see it, you don't have to live under it. And if you don't believe you're living under it, I I beg to differ. Because you're demonstrating the certain way your days are going, that you are in anxiety and in agitation. And most anxiety and agitation is never based on what's happening. It's based on what's not happening. And you have to be a devotee to what's presenting what's not happening for it to have an effect. You have to be believing your freaking thoughts quite a lot to be totally concerned about next week at the expense of this moment. And it's happening all the time. It's a heist that's going on and on and on and on and on every day. We want to name it a big thing like enlightenment or this or that, but it isn't. It's just a little, it's like that guy, they had a, I don't know if it was a man or a woman or a couple people, when the computers and everything and finances were first happening, they jacked in, and what they did is, with all these transactions, they just added, added like a quarter of a cent. But there was trillions of transactions, and they got away with a whole lot of fucking money. No one would notice, because they think the heist is this big deal. The heist is every moment of your day is being bookended by a past and a future moment. 
That's the highest. The past and the future moment, which is brought by the mental state, just encroaches on this, the moment, and don't tell, and oh, well, I'm not, that's not true. Then why is the thought system using this moment to think about tomorrow and yesterday? If it was truly out to navigate your life in the most appropriate and best way, it should fucking lent, relent and give up. The thought system should be more of a working modality. So when you need to do something, you do it, and then the thought system would recede. Not yapping all freaking day. You know, every time you walk in a room, oh, what's what's, this? It's insane. It's like so much weight being added. And of course, if you're living under a lot of weight, there's going to be irritability, restlessness, and discontent, and seeking is going to arise. And the seeking will be driven by the problem. And so you'll find a solution that will well, jackpot you even more than before. <laughs> and, you know, the imperative is, I don't feel comfortable, so you're apt to do almost anything. Yeah. But the anxiety and agitation, though experienced now, is not produced here. It's produced in yesterday and tomorrow. And not by the, what you're thinking about. You're thinking about destitution, but it is not even destitution you're worried about. You're worried about the meaning you give destitution. That's what you're worried about happening. Yeah, Destitution could be a great thing. But no, you have a strong idea. No fucking way. No. If I was destitute, that would make me bad. No one would like me. And if I'm bad, I should punish myself before, you know, God needs to punish me. You know, what's that for playing God all day? Your head. Man, there's relief. It's unbelievable when you get relief from it. Because when you get relief from it, you can really know it. You really get to see it when you're not it. You know, you get to see its production. There's nothing there. It's all what's all just already going on, just being claimed, and then being used to point to a someone all day. So the thoughts are happening. They're not going to stop happening. The thoughts are happening. Feelings go on. Experiences, actions occur. But what happens is the pointing gets weakened. You don't buy it anymore. So it's the my, all that my, okay, much. It becomes like comedy information for yourself. You keep yourself amused how small of a view this thing holds. You know what I mean? Don't spend any more money reading self-help books. It's just gobbling that shit up. It's, when you really need it, it ain't going to help you for fucking anything. It's sort of like, it's like buying an insurance thing. Oh, you'll get $300,000 and you don't get anything. You know what I mean? No, you know, I'm telling you. When you most need a fucking, like, a mental understanding will be the last place it will be. <laughs> Try it with relationships. I've taken so many relationship seminars and then still, ah! <laughs> 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 you know? <laughs> what the? You can't... <laughs> you can't... You can't damn an imaginary river. I'll use it that way. Okay. If you if you think it's an and all your all your behavior is saying it's as real as real can be, what is it going to be for you but real? If something is like uh, there's a f- acronym for fear, false evidence appears real. All right, false evidence. So false evidence. Okay, and it appears real suddenly. Like, I have nothing to do with it. (laughs) You have all to do with it. How can false evidence appear real? It has to be appearing real to something. Yeah. False evidence could never appear real, but it could appear real to you. And because you, really, as what you are, is the reality, then false evidence can seem to be as real as real can be. If... The false evidence fools the reality. If the reality goes, yeah, that's true, then it's going to be seemingly true to you. And seemingly is is an incredible word. It's going to appear to be true or false to you. Everything is based on seemingly here. Everything is seemingly. The only reality there is is what's looking right now. 
And this reality can be up the ass of self, be identified, and there's no divine proctologist in the phone book. <laughs> so you're up the ass of self, and now this reality is giving everything it's dreaming the power to affect it. Yeah. There is a solution. From the, poli- from the solution's point of view, there is no problem. Then th- at that point, there's no need for a solution either. You are that exactly as it is right now. It's not the solution that's going to bring it about. It's not the problem that's going to hide it. None of that's at all possible. None of what we think can come to pass can come to pass. We can't be out of this moment, so why try to get into it? And you can't be in self, so why try to get out of it? The trying to get out of it just reinforces the being in, just like the trying to get into the moment reinforces the belief you could be out of it. It's all, it's all backwards. It's like a bizarro world. Yeah. We believe something is so, and then we want to work really hard to make it unso, when it's been unso the whole time. <laughs> the sewing makes it so. You know, I'm going to make, I'm going to change this, yeah, sure. I remember that when I first got sober. I'm not going to have a resentment. It was like 8.30. I'm not going to have a resentment today. 8.40, I had a resentment. I mean, it just, it just keeps illustrating how much this, the lack of, pro, of power is the dilemma. We have, we're not... All our energy is in the context. Yeah. We have all these lines... Supposing a big power source, like we're connected to a big electric company, there's no one home there. There's nothing, there's no generators, nothing. We're living on fumes, <laughs> some mental fumes all day. Being right and, you know, excuses for why things aren't going well and rationalizations and blame. Yeah? But when you have a new power flow in, you'll know it. And you'll know, Jesus, I've been living under a seeming sense of lack of power for so fucking long. When you feel the real juice, you'll see it. It doesn't matter how many lines you have or how many electrical outlets. There's no juice. Yeah. You'll know it. You know? Like it says in recovery, you'll comprehend the word peace and you'll know serenity. Exactly. Not by finding something... But by questioning what's looking, who the hell is looking, who has this, see, what's looking right now is based on a lot of assumptions. You think you need a lot of things or you lack a lot of things, and this goes on, there's a a litany of lists that if all those would just be okay, I'd finally be all right. It's a lie, first of all, because you're okay. you'll see the greatest effects by loss of interest in the problem. When you lose interest in the problem, because the only thing that needs to be liberated is what you're not. What you are does not need to be liberated. What you are not, what you are does not need enlightenment. None of it. What you are is all that we've ever been fucking looking for. But we've been looking the wrong way. Because there's no right way to look for it. You stop, you give up the ghost, you stop blowing all your incredible air into that fucking doll of self with all the holes. <laughs> Keep up that image, all that work, you know, just, did I, did I do enough today to be okay for an hour? Can I watch a show, a TV show? Or do I have to keep working? You know, do I have to keep accruing value? When do I get, no, keep accruing, accrue more. You haven't got my, my permission yet. You haven't got... What am I asking for? What fucking God am I tithing to? Put your proverbial foot down and just... It's like a slavery. 
you know, on and on and on and on and on. This day is only meant to be a stepping stone to a better day ahead. You know, there's that Lowe's department store flip me out in Christmas where they had their logo, which is never stop improving. Fuck, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to, oh, oh, yes, Lowe's. Tree Lowe's, let's talk to me. That's right, never stop improving. <laughs> It came from the TV. Oh, yeah. And they're a giant. They have so much money. They must. No. Fucking get off the fucking train. You know? See what you want. You see? You know, we do in recovery by getting into, you know, you'll lose interest in the self and gain interest, interest in others. You, get, you find out what you want by not having so much interest in what you want. Yeah? You'll really find out what you're drawn to. The thing will just get corrected, and you'll see you'll see the game board from square zero instead of square three, which is the production of self. The feeling of being a someone is not square zero. It's a process that took time, and we start at square three, but we think that's the beginning of the game, and the game looks totally different from square three than it does at square zero. The pursuit of happiness may be a leisurely walk, from square zero. Because you will now know what you've been looking for and it's right where you've been looking the whole time. Where you've been looking from, it's been right there. It's just a simple calibration. The mind connect and it's like the fucking all this huge story that I've been so engaged with, it's like it never happened. Because in fact, it never did happen. Yeah, the only thing that's been, that's ever happened, we've never seen it as a happening. Yeah. Something that has a constant presence, you would never notice it. You only notice when something comes and goes. But something that's always here will be the most under-addressed phenomena of non-phenomena. You'll never notice it. Never. Your apparatus isn't built to see what is. It's built to see what isn't. Yeah. You could say what isn't is what is appearing to be what isn't, but it's still built to see what isn't. But you are not that. You're there is the mind, like they say in a lot of spiritual uh, groups, the ordinary mind and the enlightened mind are the same mind. Yeah. The same at the same possibilities there all every day, every moment. If the mind has interest in the facilitation of selfing, then that would be what you would deem a conditional ordinary mind. If it loses interest in that, it'll be accessing the enlightenment. Yeah? Simple as that. It's like a possibility all day. Yeah? It can become a habit that that possibility honored and entertained after a while becomes the stable state. Yeah, just like the other state has become the stable state for most of us, the mental state. Yeah, the same event can happen if you start honoring, let's say, like Ramana Maharshi, this great mass would call it the being. When the, there's an honoring of the being, it gives you immunity to the mental state. Yeah, and then now you can become, uh, let's say, fixed or resting in the being, and you will see the mental state but you won't be looking from the mental state. The identification will be broken, yes? And you'll know the sense of being. It's a different tactile experience than the mental state. The mental state is agitation, a lot of agitation, yes? Because it's always seeking, always seeking. The being is complete in and of itself. It's not here for any purpose except to express. It's not here to find conclusion. It's already whole. It doesn't have anything to do with time because it's not in a process of completion or erosion. It's already whole. It doesn't play all the made-up rules we've made here. Yeah, That's why it's sorely needed here to become a leavening influence in this place because you can see now the mental state is just mutating and mutating and mutating more and more and more. Now it has this new mutation technology and it's mutating and mutating and mutating through that.
I saw that example, a beautiful young girl, 12 years, 13 years old, in the park, a beautiful day. There could have been exotic birds flying. She wasn't seeing it, uh, any of it. She had her little thing taking pictures of herself for like 15 minutes, <laughs> you know, on this little bench. It was fucking, Jesus Christ. Now, the mental state probably would have loved to have done that 30 years, but it didn't have the technology. Now it's basking in its glory. Oh, I, should I have a sesame b- b- bagel? Ask, asking your friends? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Have a, what, the, what the fuck is that? You know? It had the urge, but it didn't have the ability. Now it has the ability to be totally convoluted in itself. Like this. <laughs> I mean, watch what watch what's happening. It's gonna mutate like weird mushroomy things are going to grow out of that pedri dish. The self, the the loop of self importance has been shortened. It's just you and you now all day with technology. You're just reading about you, seeing you, talking to you. What do you love, um, my? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to have today? Oh, let me see. <laughs> Before the loop of self-importance had a little space to leaven it. Now it's just like right here. You're at home, just oh, yeah, me, me. Look at it. I'm sending Instagram. <laughs> I'm gonna totally get rid of the moment. Instagram. Just they only last ten seconds. <laughs> it's like it's mental illness begetting more mental illness. <laughs> it's like I love the word abstinence. I love it because it's a living thing for me. Not just with drinking or drugs, but abstaining from that urge to be the thinker, to, to comply with that pointing. That because the habit is. It's been pointing for so long in this time frame. It seems, you know, it's easy just to give into it. But when you give into it, you know, it's like dancing with that gorilla. You're going to stop when it wants to stop. Yeah. But when there's an abstaining of it, when the thoughts aren't held as yours, their influence dries up very, very much. And then you are... And it's not like a giant realization. It's just seeing blue is blue and red is red. You realize there's nowhere else you can be but where you are. It's not a fucking... You don't have to read a 200-page book about that. It's just a... It's it's like a starting point. Yeah? All right, so I'm not trying... You know, this... Being aware of this is, is... a deterrent from all the imaginary conditions of what's not happening. Because what's not happening doesn't actually have this one quality. This one moment has a quality what's not happening doesn't have, and it's happening. This simple quality can cause an immunity to all the imaginings that your head gets up to about what's going to happen to me or what did happen to me. Yeah? This, 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 just the simple recognition of the onness right now can give you immunity to all of yesterday and tomorrow. And if you're at a talk like this, the grace is available. There's some oomph that's available. Just entertain the possibilities question may be, are you the thinker of the thoughts? If you're not, you'll lose interest in them. I swear to God. Because it's it's the idea of all about you that's causing them to have so much meaning. And everyone else, a lot of other methodologies, because this isn't a methodology. This is not a path to illumination. It will illuminate whatever path you're on. But this is not a path to illumination. These other methodologies, they want to change the thoughts, but they don't question the thinker. They want to change your feelings, but they don't question the feeler. They want to do this and do that and do that and do this and do that and do that. But the one thing, the one elephant in the room never gets addressed. Your role in everything, like it says in physics, the biggest influence of any experiment is the observer of it. The biggest 
influence of any life is the living of it. Yeah. So when you have a pause, it's a big thing in recovery, the pause. Uh, the pause is a very close facsimile of what you are, really. That emptiness that's vibrantly full. And what you've been really lonely for is you, really, what you really are in your own life. You've been estranged from you by a me, really. If you were in your life, your life would be satisfying just for that sake. Yeah. If what you are was apparent in your day, that day made looking very simple and very, very ordinary, maybe even boring, could be incredibly jam packed full of contentment. Yeah. The water isn't producing the joy, it's your, your mind, the mind. And it likes that trigger, so it has that trigger, and then the water induces or pulls out the joy, but the water isn't the source of joy. You are. I am. Yes. Because now I can't go in the water, and yet the joy is still available. Because it was always, always and forever coming from, not coming towards. Yeah. Or usually going away <laughs> was the dilemma. But now it's this from. So... You find you truly are the point of reliability. And you want to call it a higher power now, but after a while, the higher power of your own understanding will turn into a higher power of its own understanding, and the higher power of its own understanding is you. You're it. You are the juice. Yeah. feel it, eh, now? It's like juicy in the room. It's like a pregnant pause, don't you feel it? It's like it's got some... I'm always hoping you do. <laughs> That's the whole point. I mean, this is just a charade. The talking is just to have this sense become obvious. Because you're going to came, you're going to come, you're going to leave with exactly what you came in with, which is nothing. But nothing has been under-addressed. Nothing is the gift that keeps on giving. Nothing is everything. Nothing has no quantity uh, requirements, so it doesn't run out. No, it's nothing. Yeah? And it's the most reliable thing, because it's not a thing. Let's see. (laughs) and every time you go back to nothing it's there every fucking time it never gets full of itself like some things do (laughs) seriously you would in the mental state you'd totally walk right over it if it was actually here you wouldn't notice it you wouldn't give it the time of day that's how valuable it is by its missing it, it's an indication of how valuable it is. All of its looking will never pick it up. That's an indication of how valuable it is. It hasn't been given over to this. This isn't, this gauge, this barometer can never pick up its presence. Even if it's hunting for eons, it'll never find it. It's hidden right and out in the open, always available at all times, with no requirement necessary. Yeah. You don't you don't get it by going anywhere, you just question what's here. If you're not that, you may be that. Yeah. So yes, that's it, I guess. Any questions?
No, no questions. Great. I gave a long time that time. The window was open. I, I went somewhere for a second. You should have taken advantage and gone right in. Now it's down. All right. Well, that's, uh, listen, we have talks twice a week. Wednesday in the city, Saturday in Marin City, 1115. We have a website called Zen Bitch Slap. Everyone knows who you guys from making an announcement. Zen Bitch Slap that has uh, all free content. And it has the schedule, so if I'm not there, we'll tell you on the website. And um, Paul, say where it is in Marin City. It's in St. Andrew's Church. You know, because... You know, they have AA meetings there. It's in the schedule all the time. It's the same location, but it's not AA. It's 11.15, Saturday. And then we go out to coffee. I really like Saturday. It's a, we have a lot of fellowship. And um, this is about... You can repeat this message a lot. And I find that it's helpful. It's almost like using the poison as an antidote because people are very... Uh, mostly what we're believing has just been repeated quite a lot. So, and uh, that's it. Yes. <laughs> and we give out money here. You, should, you missed your point. You could have grabbed some. Yeah. They're smarter. They took some out already. <laughs> Whatever you need, take some. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> so here, I love you all to have a lot of money, but I don't want you to have any of mine. You see, you see the difference with my and money? See, it? if you can find an example of it, it's the truth of everything everywhere. You just pick out one. It doesn't mean that's a that's a uh, insulated or isolated event. You can say, hey, I'd love to see every one of you have a lot of money, but not in your mind. You ever hear that with people? They say, oh, yeah, the money's never done much for me, but they're not giving you any, are they? <laughs> no fucking way. <laughs> really? They say, oh, really? It doesn't mean anything. Okay, kick down. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no. You know? It's the my, yeah? The my changes what we... It changes everything dramatically, really dramatically. And it's happening all day. See, you're thinking this is a big event. You think the relief from it is a big event, which it isn't. And therefore, you think the, the dilemma is this big event called Maya or an illusion, which it ain't. It's just an activity going on all day. The heist is available, and it's all fueled by interest and attention, basically. So if it's about you, yeah, that's the, the mechanism of the heist. The heist is using the you to get your interest attention and then using it for some other nefarious activity, which is to produce a sense of being a someone, a mental someone. If you have abstinence from that, then you're resting in soness in a way. You know, you're, you're not really that worried about yesterday or tomorrow. You're just engaged here because that is the only here you can be engaged in. You know, it's just very simple. It's not like you have to learn it. It's just you already have it innately. It's just something is sort of causing a disruption or a seeming distortion. When that gets corrected, you know, what's not so and what's so will be clear in a lot of ways. Let's put it that way. All right? You want to end with a prayer? We like to say a prayer. Everyone all right? They're all subdued. And <laughs> We're standing on two eyes here. <laughs> <Not going over. laughs> it's the devil, Satan. <laughs>
Hey great. Jeff, call me up if you want to know. Yeah, that's going to talk to me. If you don't want to talk, I don't understand. No, that's how he gets rid of me. Yeah, call me tomorrow. We'll get together. Okay, that sounds good. Thank right. you. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Doing everything. Oh, great, great. Nice cool. to meet you. Nice to meet Take you. care. Yeah. You know, I used to listen to your talks all the time. Oh, you did? Oh, many good. years ago, but never in recovery. And it's like I... I, I got a lot more of it. I mean, I used to get a lot of it, too, but... Well, coming know. live is really good. Yeah. And I being always sober, too. Yeah, yeah. And being sober, that too. That's yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, yes, yes. That will help, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not like you're going to go to a meditation mm-hmm. class shooting cocaine. I've heard that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Hey, Chris, you want to get something? Yeah, good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, it's, uh, Chris, you want to go to the crate place or you want to go somewhere else? Do you? Well, you can always come in and sit down with us. Yeah, but I almost fell asleep. Sorry. All right, if anyone wants to come, we're going to go eat at maybe a crate. Okay, well, I'm going to go home. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, I, don't see you. I want to give myself some credit. I'm playing to this. In the last two times. Yeah, I know. That happens to him a lot. And he used to say that too. Small oh, I've got to give him money. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. It's a small thing for mankind. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's starting, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Anyhow, yeah, I was about to tease you that uh, I'll say hello to Byron's Bay. You know. I checked the plane yeah. tickets from Melbourne to there. They're not that much. Really good. They're like uh, 175 bucks. So. Where are you going? Um, cool. Melbourne and Byron's Bay, Australia. Oh, you're going to come. Where are you going? Where do you want to go for food? Uh, probably the crepe place because it's open, open and uh, yeah, it's yeah. right down the street. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's go to Chinese. Uh, is it? Oh, All right, tell Chris. Oh, yeah. Tell Chris and set it up, and I'll just follow. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.